Okay, next thing we're going to do is add in our second floor. And the way we're doing it here is, is the purpose is for teaching. Um, I'm not necessarily saying this is the actual sequence. I do it to be the most efficient way to draw uh, this building, but it is a good way because if we bumble our way along a little bit, then we learn all kinds of little cleanups. If everything's kind of picture perfect, uh, you don't learn quite as much. So uh, let's go to top of second. Okay, we can zoom in. And top of second, uh, just in case you are wondering, you can see the walls below. Now, by default, you shouldn't really be able to see them because they're not in our view range. However, you'll notice the underlay. There's an underlay in here by default called main. Uh, if you turn that off, you won't see that. Okay, you shouldn't really see the walls because they're not being cut. But the purpose of an underlay is to be able to show things that are underlaid. You can underlay any floor or any plan view into any other plan view. You can underlay the 33rd floor, you know, into the fourth floor or vice versa. So it doesn't have to be below it. It could be above it. And it's the equivalent of sliding in a transparency of a different floor below and lining them all up. So it's great for mechanical when they want to locate you know, a mechanical unit on the 10th floor, but they want to see where the sump pit is in the basement, you simply underlay the 10th floor into your foundation plan, and then away you go. So uh, let's draw the second floor, and it's basically going to be just a big square until we decide where our stairway is going to go. So back to architecture, and we're going to go floor, and we're going to do just an architectural floor. We need to decide what floor type we're doing. We go into sketch mode. The only way out of here is to, is to exit and say cancel. I don't want to do it or finish. If you hit finish, you have to make sure that you have closed polygons um, that form the outer limits. And if you want to have openings, you cut openings by creating internal closed polygons. So I am going to just check in. We, we want to check all our dials. We want to make sure we have the right floor type. We're on the right floor. It's on the right level, etc. So floor generic 150. I'm going to hit edit type. Same thing. We can, again, have this preview in here. We can say show me a section. Oh, that's all there is of floors is sections. And I can pick on here and say, okay, you know, concrete, you know, different floor default that are out of the box inside of here. So I want to create... I think I'm going to make it a 10 inch concrete slab floor. So I'm going to find something close. Let's see. Generic, generic, 10 inches, 250 millimeters. So watch what I'm going to use. Use the generic 300 millimeter. And I'm going to hit duplicate, which makes a new one. I'm going to just backspace this whole thing and say 200 or 250, 10 inch, 250 millimeter concrete. Horrible typing. All right, and hit OK. So that's the name of it. Now I'm going to hit the edit structure, and I'm going to say the structure is 300, no, it's 250. And I can pick on my material button right in here. You have to pick once and then pick the little square. First time the material dialog box comes up, it kind of takes a bit of time, and then um, subsequent openings of the material dialog box will go a little bit quicker. And again, materials can be done as an afterthought. We don't have to do this now, but we might as well. I'm just going to type C-O-N conk in here. And concrete cast in situ. Okay, it's going to have this hatch pattern when it's cut, surface pattern, none. Everything looks good. So I've just picked my material. Hit OK. And hit OK. And one more. Now I have a new wall type call, floor 250 concrete with the right material. Again, I'm going to use my handy rectangular tool. And I'm going to go right from the grid line to the corner down here. Bang. 
escape, escape. No, I'm not going to align or lock it. Okay. And hit finish. Boom. Would you like the walls that go up to this floor to level to attach to its bottom? We're going to say no. We have to be careful because when it asks us to attach the walls below up to it, it doesn't let you pick and choose which ones. It basically attaches all of them. So they kind of extend themselves either up or down to the underside of the floor. I always recommend not to do that when prompted. Okay, and it stays highlighted if I wanted to change the thickness or something like that and escape. If I want to go back at any time and modify it, I pick on the floor and I say edit boundary and then I can fix it. Now, maybe I do want to align it to my grid lines. Let's do that. Let's use the align tool. Say align to this grid line, this and lock it. Okay, that one's actually probably not going to move because that's the one that's down here, but that's okay. I'm going to, and then I'm going to take my multiple off and say align to here this guy, lock it, okay? And again, align two here, this guy, lock it, okay? Aligning two here, this guy, lock it. When I'm done, I hit modify. Now what that's doing is if I move my grid lines, my floor will actually update. Hit finish. Would you like walls that go up? It asks us that same question every time. No. Oh, did I say yes? Hit escape. Let's undo that. Let's go back. Are they still aligned? I just did an undo. Yes, they are. Okay, see how I did an undo and it brought me back into sketch mode? Finish. Would you like, I want to make sure I say no. And it stays highlighted. Escape, escape. Go to my 3D view. And there's that floor and there's the wall that goes up to the top of the level. Okay, but I don't really want that. And I did this this way on purpose. So this is okay. This is my 250 floor right at the top of my second floor. We'll have a look at the section later. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick on this wall. And watch, I'm going to get sneaky. Shift middle mouse to swivel. Okay, watch. I'm going to pick this wall and I'm going to hover over here, hover, and then hit tab. Boop. And then click. Oh, I didn't want to go all the way around. Click. Tab. Click. Oh, it's grabbing them all. I thought it would only do a chain effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy using my control button and my shift control. See the plus control lets you pick more than one. Okay, I've grabbed those all those walls. And now I'm going to go over to here and say top of main of offset of zero up to top of second with an offset of minus 250, which will bring it down to the bottom of the floor. Click out. Now I have a nice clean finish. That still doesn't look right to me. We're going to maybe have to have a little look at the at a cross section. Let's have a look at our south elevation. What's going on here? There's our level two. No, that's right. There's our floor. There's our wall. For now, we're going to, we can um, extend the brick down, okay, a little bit onto there. We can talk about that and then do some detailing of it. Let's make a section. Let's go back to top of main and let's do a quick cross section through here. We're going to go in here, view, section, click on here, drag across, hit escape, escape on the keyboard, zoom in, do a section and change our detail level to be fine. There's our bottom floor. Let's change this to say shaded. Okay, that's all we have so far. Not a big deal. Okay, and what we might do in the end is pull this uh, wall out to be um, uh, to be at that air space. So I think we might have to re-offset that so then we can carry our brick up. So all little things that we're going to have to fix. So uh, let's just do our save as project. And we're going to go in here and make this lesson eight for our next lesson.